Hi students, welcome to exercise 21. Uh, <coughs> exponential functions. Okay, so definition uh, or defined, but an exponential function is defined by f of x, which is just your y, equals to a certain value of b to the power of x. Okay, and b is your base, and x is your exponent, also the variable. Um, b cannot equal to 1 for these functions, because if b is equal to 1, 1 to the power of something is just 1. So that would be a constant function. And b also is defined by a positive value, um, because if it's negative, then you get a pretty funky graph. So for these exponential functions, uh, let's sketch one, just to see what the general shape is. So we're going to sketch the function of y equals 2 to the power of x. So let's insert some values here for x. Um, let's insert maybe uh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Start with those. Okay, so if I was to plug in that value of x in here, 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 quarter. So that would be 1 quarter. Uh, if you plug in negative 1, you get a half. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Okay, and you add, we don't really have room for the next one, but if you would put 3 in here, right, you would get 8. Notice that we don't have 8 on our scale. All right, so let's put our points down. Um, at negative 2, you have 1 quarter. So we have something really close to here. So probably right about there. right? At negative 1, you got a half. So probably about there. At 0, you have 1. At 1, you have 2. And at 2, you have 4. All right. So your graph looks something like this. <clears throat> um, let's... Sketch the line. Okay. And I'm going to put an arrow on both ends to describe the graph is going to go up to infinity up here. So when x becomes very large, the value of y becomes large. And notice when x becomes infinitely small, but large in terms of negative. So if you put 2 to the power of a negative 1,000 there, you would have two to 1 over 2 to the power of 1,000. So it would be a huge number, but on the denominator. So you're basically approaching 0. And that's why you would have a horizontal asymptote here. So you have a horizontal asymptote because this graph will infinitely approach this value of 0, but will never actually get there because 2 to the power of a negative number, uh, if that number gets bigger, well, it's just going to continue and continue to get closer to 0. All right, a couple things to note. The base of this exponential function is 2, right? So that was in the equation. The function is increasing throughout. So notice that from if I'm moving left to right, this function continues to grow constantly. So we call that increasing functions. The graph passes through the point 0, 1. That's an important point for most and uh, for all exponential graphs. Um, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that's what we just discussed here. So since y cannot be negative. So anything, to, if you would do uh, 2 to the power of anything, this will never give you a, neg a negative value, ever. So that's that horizontal asymptote kind of describes that. The domain is negative infinity to infinity, which means anything from negative infinity to infinity can be put for x. But however, the range is from 0 to infinity, and notice we do not include 0. Okay, so it's 0 to infinity, but not including 0. That's where your asymptote is. And the graph approaches y equals 0, so it approaches the asymptote when x becomes infinitely large but negative. So, okay, so those are the important facts of an exponential function. Okay, so here's a few more graphs. Um, <clears throat> let's sketch this first one over here. f of x equals 3 to the power of x minus 1. So thinking back at transformations, this will just be the, the function 3 to the power of x, and then subtract 1. So it means it's going to go down 1. Okay, so that's the transformation of translation 1 down. Okay, so let's just kind of uh, sketch that 3 to the power of x. Okay, so 3 to the power of 0, well, that'll always be 1. And that's why we described that point on the other graph. Okay, so that's a point, 3 to the power of 0 is 1, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this point right here, that's an important point for any exponential function. Now the next point, when x is 1, you'll notice that that'll just depend on the base, right? If it's 3 to the power of 1, the next point is at 3. If it's 4 to the power of 1, the next port point will be at 4. On our first graph, on the last page, it was 2 to the power of 1, so the base was at, the base was 2 and the next point was at 1, 2. So in our case, the point will be at 1, 3. 
because the base is 3. Okay, so now all we have to do to these two points, and we'll take those as our two key points, we have to bring them down 1. So they're going to go down 1 here, and this one's going to go down 1 right here. Okay, another thing that went down 1 is the asymptote, because normally there's an asymptote at y equals 0, but because of the minus 1, the asymptote is now at negative 1. So you should have an asymptote here at negative 1. And your graph is going to look something like this. Okay, I'm just trying to... And here we go. There's our graph. Okay, so the next one, base 4. So again, our exponential function that you should be thinking of, or at least like uh, in terms of our description, it's going to pass by the point 0, 1 and the, by the point 1, 4. Okay, so that's our base function. So now we just got to do the transformations. So this transformation, if you guys remember, this will be a reflection over the y equals 0 uh, axis or the x-axis. So this curve, okay, is now going to become this curve. Okay, so that's what that negative is going to do. So the first transformation we're going to do is uh, flip those points. So we're going to have the points, or maybe we can make squares here to re represent the second transformation. And then... You guys might recognize this transformation. This will be a tra horizontal translation, one to the left. So our final points would be here and here. Okay, And we'll have an asymptote. So no the asymptote, notice, which was at zero here, flipped around so it stays there. And when you move over to the left, nothing changes. So you're going to have your y equals zero and your curve looks something like this. Sorry, I was supposed to hit that point, but just missed it. Okay, a couple more. So now, 3 to the power of negative x plus 1, so we're just kind of going over all the different transformations. So this is our power of 3, so we've sketched that one in the first example here, right? So this is our first two points. Okay, so there's the first two points. So now this is a reflection over <coughs> x equals 0 axis, or the y-axis, right? So it's a reflection over the y-axis. So our first transformation, so this point will stay the same, and now this point will go here, right? And then the plus 1, well, this is a horizontal, uh, a vertical translation, 1 up. So the final points would be now at 0, 2, and negative 1, 4. So it went up 1. And notice that your asymptote would also move up 1. So your asymptote would now be here, and your graph will look something like this. Okay. Um, and the last one. Okay, so you have one half to the power of x. Uh, let's let's write this a little differently. So one half to the power of x, this would be the same thing as saying one to the power of x divided by two to the power of x. And notice that one to the power of x, well that'll just be one, because one to the power of anything is one. And then on the denominator. Well, you have 2 to the power of x. Well, I can move this up top, and it becomes 2 to the power of negative x. So this is just an exponential function with a base 2. So again, we take these two points, like our first page. Okay, so this it'll be this function, right? And now, because of the negative, it is a reflection over the y-axis. So your final points would be here. This point doesn't move. And then here. And your horizontal asymptote, again, didn't change because it was just a reflection over the y-axis, and you would get something like this. Oops. Okay. Um, note that we call these functions, and these two here, we call these decreasing functions. So whenever your, your exponent is negative, what you get is you get a decreasing function, and that's what this node is all about. When the exponent is negative, we call this a decreasing function, because if you move from left to right, it's always going down. All right. Okay, on the last page, example three, sketch the following graph. This is just a combination of all the different transformations. Uh, not all of them, but a good chunk of them. So here, notice that our exponential function, the base graph, is just three to the power of x. So we're gonna start with these two points at zero, one. So again, any exponential function passed by the point zero, one. And because the base is three, right, the base is three here, you'll have one, three. So now we have to do all the transformations. First thing we gotta do, is we got to do the reflection. So that's going to be reflection over the x-axis. 
So our first points, and I'm trying to change colors. So our first points, we now have our points here and our point here. So now this two, what this two does is it's a vertical stretch. If you think about your f of x functions, this would be a, a vertical stretch. So now the points will be, and I'm gonna change color. Um, you're gonna double the negative one, which is here, and you're gonna double the negative three. So sadly, I'm gonna go off the graph just a tiny bit, but it'll be negative six, so we'll pretend it's there. Okay, um, and then we gotta do a translation from two to the right. So two to the right for those points. We got this point, and then we got that point. And then our final graph, um, and we're gonna make that final graph uh, purple. Um, our final graph is gonna move up four. So this point moves up four over here. So this point's gonna move here. This is a final point. And this point moves up four over here, which is here. Okay, and I hope you were keeping track of where that vert or horizontal asymptote was. So don't forget it starts here. When we do the flip, it's still here, right? Um, when you do the stretch, notice that at y equals zero, when you do the stretch, nothing happens. When you move it over two to the right, nothing happens. But when you move it up four, well, that's gonna change something. So our horizontal asymptote will be at four and our graph will look something like that. Okay, um, notice that we won't actually ever touch the asymptote, so make sure when you sketch your graph that you, you're not actually touching your asymptote. Okay, so your line should go all the way close. That's why you don't want to extend their line too long. Close, and then touching through the points. Okay, so here it's asking us what's the equation of the asymptote. Well, that's simply y equals to 4. And notice that that came directly from this point, this value. And the last thing I want to do, if, if you're not sure about these transformations, I'm going to rewrite this in terms of uh, our transformation equation. So this would be equals to y equals to negative 2 f of x minus 2 plus 4. So you might be able to see the transformations a bit better. So our original graph is 3 to the power of x. You would reflect it, multiply y by 2, move 2 to the right, move up 4. All right, guys, good luck. Oh, that's what this was writing here. <laughs> I didn't even notice. So if the parent function was 3 to the power of x, that would be our graph. And we got an error here because this should be plus 4. <laughs> All right, guys, good luck, and uh, we'll see each other in class.